Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and a new experiment today where we're taking a look at what would happen if the Welsh Premier League had essentially unlimited money. So the way that this experiment will work is every team that you can see here, all 12 of them from Aberystwyth down to the New Saints, have been giving in the full game editor an income of three hundred million pounds every single year. The reason I did it that way was that it should just come through as either sponsorship money, kit money, general income. But if there are any financial fair play stuff, particularly if they get to the European stage, they will be able to manage that transition quite comfortably. It also means I don't have to keep going into this in-game editor all the time to give them money. I have given them all a starting bank balance of £100 million. They should get a payment of £300 million in a, about a month's time, I think it is, um, which will help load them up. They've also all been given a front-end sugar daddy, but they never stick around particularly long in the game. Now, I've not changed anything else about any of these clubs. They've still only got a max club attendance of 2500 uh, only 379 actually turning up to the games. Transfer budget, uh, I think I increased that quite a bit. You can see there, that's... Oh no, it starts in the full game editor. I changed it so that they get a bigger transfer budget at the start of the game as well. Uh, so you can see that reflected there. Facilities, all dreadful still for every single club. They're just not big teams, these ones. Uh, they don't get the fans. They don't have the facilities. 3,000 about the biggest stadium you're likely to see. And they've had very little European success, which is why they are down in 114th place. How many are there? I mean, it's not too bad. There are 386 levels if you go down to the Northern Irish level 10. Um, but otherwise, 114th, they're down with the Romanian third tier. Uh, Divizia A from Moldova are above them, but they're just above the Gibraltar. Uh, Gibraltar National League, the Dansk Bank Premiership in Northern Ireland, and they're alongside the Faroe Islands, F.O. Daildin? F.O. Daildin. I'll go for that. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what this does, because that's across the 12 teams, that's 300, uh, sorry, 3.6 billion every single year coming into this country uh, to boost up their finances. So they won't be able to spend it because they don't have the reputation at the moment. Uh, that will take time to come up. This is way too low to attract any decent players. But it should start to have a bit of an impact. Now, I'm not actually sure, if we look at the rules, uh, who qualifies for Europe and how they do it. So, final European places playoff. Uh, so, you can see there, that's how they get in. Uh, first place gets the UEFA Champions League champions first qualifying round. Uh, second and third go into the Europa League rounds, um, including the first qualifying preliminary rounds. And then they have a playoff for the final European place. So four teams actually going into Europe is not a bad amount. They should be able to start building up that coefficient, which will get them up from 114th place. Now, apologies. It's been a long time since I uploaded. I took some time off over Christmas. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys had a nice Christmas and New Year as well. If you're excited for videos being back on the channel, make sure you subscribe down below. Uh, and do drop a like on the video as well. Let me know what kind of videos you would like to see. I've been tempted to do a series again, but they never really get that many views, so I tend to stick with experiments. But if you have an experiment idea, then do let me know in the comments. But let's jump forward now about one, let's go one, two years ahead, and then ultimately we'll go 10 years ahead today and see if they've managed to make a big jump with this huge amount of money they have available. Well, we are one year in the future, and you can see the New Saints have won the league. Five points clear of Ballatown with Gap Connors Key in there as well. Uh, they do have the little split like you have in Scotland as well, but Carnarvon and Pennybont have both been relegated despite their rich finances. That's a very aggressive <laughs> graph there. Um, but Pennybont go down and Carnarvon as well. Um, so they are now extremely wealthy clubs. If we look in their finances... Huge amount of money, £249 million in the bank. Cardiff Met Uni just about surviving. But the New Saints are champions. They have been champions for a very long time. Uh, if we look at their senior squad schedule, uh, you can see they did go into the Champions League qualifying rounds and actually get past Valletta, uh, or I think a Maltese, are they? Um, let me see, Valletta, yeah, Maltese team. Um, and then they did get knocked out by Ludogorets, who are obviously a good group stage team these days 
Um, and then in the Europa League, they did manage to get past Riga, which is not bad, but then beaten by Red Star Belgrade. No surprise there, really, um, as they managed to make it through uh, quite comfortably, to be honest, 6 0 on aggregate. But then their league campaign going very well. Um, and then they had the Conference Championship. They did also win the Welsh Cup to go with their Premier League title. So that's not too bad for them. If we have a look at their transfer history, you can see they did spend £205,000, all of it on one player, Calder Silva, uh, from Brentford. Um, so that's where their money's gone. It looks like there probably hasn't been that much spent overall. If we look at the transfers overall... Only one team have actually spent money, the New Saints, the only team to actually spend any cash. So it'll be interesting what they do going from there. If we have a look at their uh, landmarks, you can see they've not done anything with their facilities or anything else. So this is why it's going to be such a slow progress to go forward, because they have a huge amount of money, £400 million, and they aren't spending it despite this enormous transfer budget and wage budget. It will take time for them to get there. If we have a look quickly at the players... You can see wages are out of control already. Eight grand a week for Danny Redmond, who was brought in. Where'd he come from? Uh, brought in on a free the year before as well. So he's just been given a new contract worth eight grand. Um, it's not tied to anything else as far as I can see. Jamie Stevens on £3,700 a week. Huge amount of money brought in on a free from Barnet, to be fair. So that does have some explanation. But the potential ability of these players, extremely low but it's a sign it's a sign things are moving forward i don't think we need to spend too much time looking at that uh, and i don't think going one year at a time is going to be particularly helpful so let's go four years ahead to a total of five and then we'll go to ten well we are now five years ahead from where we started off the year 2024 and you can see the new saints have lost their league title cop uh, gap connor's key coming in the new saints had been winning it every year they actually went unbeaten in their second year so they've pulled away uh, from kef and druids uh, very quickly they are one of the teams with a lot of money um, the following year New Saints winning it again uh, again and then most recently Gap Connors Key taking it ahead of the New Saints uh, with a big big margin so the New Saints have been winning everything until recently if we look at their landmarks now uh, you can see all these champions uh, things coming in uh, I'm just looking for anything unusual uh, you see, so there you go, the, the scaled down funding, the front end billionaire starting to pull his money out a little bit. Uh, but it doesn't look like they've done anything with the facilities or anything similar. If we just have a quick look at their senior squad schedule, they are the most likely to have succeeded in a European competition and out in the Europa League group stage. Um, they did get knocked out by Rosenberg and then couldn't beat the Sarajevo team. The following year, they did manage to go a bit further, uh, beaten by Ludgoritz again. Uh, knocked out by Maribor in the Europa League qualifying rounds and then Slovan at Bratislava. They did actually beat to make it into the Euro Cup 2. Uh, and they also beat Besiktas 2-1. That is a huge result for them. Um, but the success was not sustained and they were comfortably knocked out of Euro Cup 2. The following year, they didn't even make it into the group stage. And then most recently, they've actually made it into the Europa League on away goals. Now, that's quite a friendly draw to be given here. But they did it with this goal, Ernest Aguirre, getting them into the Europa League. Um, but they weren't doing particularly well in this one. Several defeats coming uh, and beaten in all six matches so they weren't able to go particularly far but that is the reason if we have a look at the Welsh Premier League that they've jumped up here the competition reputation from down in 114th when we started uh, they got to 99th 89th and now they've shot up to 78th for getting up there uh, the Danksbank Premiership also going up uh, but the Icelandic League Lithuanian League all coming down as these teams go up now looking at these transfer screens if we go back, remember they only spent 205k. Uh, the following year, a lot more clubs started to dish out the cash. A couple of million being spent across the board, probably 3 million. The following year, again, a few teams breaking that 100k barrier. Barry Town bringing in a few players. Uh, and then we've nearly broken half a million on one player here. Not much through the rest of the teams. And in the most recent year, we do break that 500k value, 800k. Kevin Druids signing the man there. But not a lot of money being spent by all of the other teams. Now, Kevin Druids really going for it in terms of signings. 
Uh, and if we look, their reputation now above 2,000 finances, very healthy facilities, not particularly changed. Just a quick look at their landmarks. And you can see they got a new chairman come on, uh, which doesn't affect their income coming in. It only affects whether they have a sugar daddy owner, but they have upgraded their youth and training facilities, which will help boost the reputation, uh, give their players better opportunities to beat the opposition in the Europa knockout stages, um, and then maybe actually progress up the league. So let's jump forward another five years and see if Gap Connors Key can hang on or if the new Saints do manage to come back. So you can see the following year, the new Saints did manage to take the title, but only on a goal difference ahead of Gap Connors Key. Uh, they then came back, won two in a row before the new Saints came back, and then Barry Town came out of nowhere to win it on goal difference as well. One point separating the top three there on the final day. So a really big um, final day of the season for these clubs. But these three seem to be the dominant teams. The new Saints still on that kind of high end of the table run um, but I can't see that much has changed in their reputation or anything here if we look at the club details their finances are enormous 800 million but they're not really putting it into their facilities as far as I can see if we look at the landmarks uh, new owner did come in but they still not upgraded their facilities or anything uh, which is a little bit disappointing it won't help them particularly much it doesn't look like they've done that well in europe either not making it in to the group stages or oh, they did here actually oh that was 24 season we already saw that so yeah a little bit disappointing they didn't make it into the group stages but gap gunners key have been more successful in this period of time currently managed by craig dawson they had a bad last year but overall they've been doing quite well looking at their landmarks here uh, new businessmen coming in, youth and training facilities have been upgraded. Um, I just want to look at their player wages quickly. And you can see a lot of players here on very, very big budgets. Uh, Vonte Daly Campbell on nearly 10 grand a week, having come in on a free transfer. Just a quick look at their senior squad schedule, not making it out there. They did manage, manage to make it into Euro Group 2. Um, Euro Cup to rather Group B and they did manage to get a couple of wins as well but they didn't make it out of that group the year before they also made it into Euro Cup 2 but it looks like they didn't manage to quite make it out of that group despite quite a few games where they didn't actually lose and then the year before that didn't make it through and didn't make it through so there you go that's Gap Connors Key and finally Barry Town the team that have come to win their first title uh, in a very long time don't currently have a manager I assume that manager has been poached but if we look at the landmarks for them uh, there have been youth and training facilities upgraded youth and training facilities upgraded they have been pumping money into actually updating the club uh, so they don't have a huge amount of money but their facilities definitely the best we've seen so far in the league I just want to see their wage budget and it's a pretty similar story edging towards that 10 grand a week now as their reputation increases and just a quick look at that senior squad schedule um, didn't make it through didn't make it through and again and again and again so there you go not many teams make it into the group stage of the Euro Cup 2 at this point just look at the transfers here uh, and if we start where we left off last time here, 650k spent by Balatel, not a huge amount of money, uh, virtually nothing spent the next season, just 12k the biggest transfer, 200k, and then suddenly the new site spent 8.5 million on Nicola Karic from Watford. That is a shot from the dark there, 8.5 million pounds spent, he's not exactly paid them back with performances. But what an enormous signing that is. To go from 43k, the next biggest signing, the following year, 750k spent. So we have our first million pound signing, and it's eight and a half million pounds. They really have gone absolutely crazy here. Um, they don't even have a proper pitch at this point, but they do have 19 league titles, and just, I, I can't believe they haven't done anything with the facilities that are upgraded. Um, their stadium or even had plans to upgrade their stadium that's a crazy thing to me um, but that's kind of where they've ended up now in the Welsh Premier League up to 54th at this point so they're really climbing those rankings quickly because they are making it into the occasional group stage uh, so they're actually 
If they're in 54th now, they're only just behind the Scottish Championship. So they're really getting up that table. Uh, they are above League 2, but just below League 1. That's the level they're at. So their reputation will be boosted by climbing up this table. And we might see a few big names being brought into the Welsh teams. And hopefully Wales doing really well out of it. Um, I will have a look at the kind of players they're bringing through. I imagine they'll be Welsh nationals, but because they haven't upgraded their facilities, they won't have any good players coming through. When we get them to that 20-point mark on youth facilities and training facilities, they will have good young players coming through, and we can have a look if it's having an impact on the Welsh national side. But that is going to be it for the first part of this experiment. Do drop a like down below if you enjoyed it. Let me know if there's something you'd like to see that I didn't show you, and I'll put that into the next one. But until next time, see ya.